Okay, this video is to go over the basics of editing the valley bottom once you've produced the valley bottom output. So before you start, um, it's important to have some base layers to use to kind of guide your decisions as you're editing the valley bottom. So the most important are um, uh, imagery first of all. So right here I have the middle fork of the John Day up and I am using just an ape imagery and then a hill shade as well is really important so this is just a hill shade derived from the 10 meter DEM and then the other one is Google Earth and um, I'll show you why in a minute you can use the 3D capabilities of Google Earth and that can be pretty useful so um, to just to show you how we get that nape imagery um, what you can do is use the USDA's ArcGIS services so if you just do a Google search and look for USDA ArcGIS services uh, it'll pull up this PDF here and if you go through this PDF it gives you instructions on how to use the USDA's, USDA's ArcGIS services in ArcMap so once you've done that all you have to do is in your arc map come down here to GIS services and then it'll have this ArcGIS on gis.apfo.usda.gov and in there there's a NAEP folder that has imagery for all of the states so that's been really convenient and useful for us so when editing the valley bottom it's important to consider um, you know what is the valley bottom and we're going to have another video up eventually kind of going out over the geomorphology um, of what makes a valley bottom a valley bottom um, versus just the rest of a valley so I won't go too much into that for now but basically it's you know you're looking for the areas that are contemporary floodplain or um, alluvial deposits where the river is free to meander um, and migrate over time so you're including this, the, these valley bottoms and excluding terraces and fans and things like that where the river could never, um, could never migrate to. So I guess we'll just go ahead and go into the editing. Um, as far as the editing goes, there are kind of three different tiers. So the first one is on the less priority basins. Maybe uh, if you're doing a big Huck 6 ba basin that's not a priority basin, then you want to go through and edit at a scale of 1 to 24,000. So we'll zoom in here to that scale. So um, 1 to 24,000 is, is a good enough scale to, to get you a, a pretty good valley bottom without having to go into too much detail. So that's kind of the first stage of editing the valley bottom. And the second stage would be to do it a little more detailed at a 1 to 10,000 scale and this is the scale that you want to use for the priority basins and the areas where you want to get as accurate of a valley bottom as possible and then the third stage would be to um, send the edits to a third party have them review it and look over it and send it back and then maybe incorporate the suggestions that you think are appropriate and that's how you get your your final valley bottom. As far as editing goes, um, we'll just edit here at the 1 to 10,000 scale so you gotta make sure you're editing the polygon and there's a few pretty useful tools. The thing that you, that you do the most is just reshape the polygon so if you highlight it there and use this reshape polygon tool here um, you just go through and fix areas where either it didn't grab enough or it grabbed too much so for example here there's kind of this peninsula jutting out there that probably shouldn't be included so you just start drawing there on the line and draw where it should be and double click to finish drawing and it just fixes it easy as that um, so that's what you'll be doing for the most part as far as editing. Um, in some cases, um, 
so say there's a big a big mound here that wasn't that you didn't want to be included in the valley bottom then what you would use is this cut polygons tool and you would start here just on the edge go out to whatever it was you wanted to exclude and draw around it and then before completing that circle you would just go back to the edge here double click to finish drawing then you would select this interior polygon and delete it and then you just need to reconnect this portion of the valley bottom using this um, you go to create features and auto complete polygon so then you just kinda connect those corners again and double click to finish drawing and then you want to select that little polygon you just drew hold shift and select the rest of the valley bottom and then go to editor merge ok and it will merge that and leave a hole there in the valley bottom so if you so say that you're editing the valley bottom and there's a hole there that shouldn't be there like in this case to, so you want to fix that and the way to do that is to again use the autocomplete polygon and you just start drawing on an edge of the, the, the hole and draw around it and then when you get to the end there you cross over your initial line you drew and go inside that hole double click to finish drawing and that'll kinda make this hole its own polygon so it's already highlighted so you just shift and highlight the rest of the valley bottom editor merge OK and it'll merge it into the rest of the valley bottom so basically as far as editing that's all that you're going to really need to do just reshape cut and add to using those different editing tools and like I said um, when you're doing this to make those decisions you have both the evidence of the imagery as well as this hill shade and if you have any other useful layers like topographic maps or maybe um, we've used hydric soils things like that in the past those can be very useful too and then like I said Google Earth is super useful too so if you kind of um, have questions about an area you can zoom into it in Google Earth and then what I like to do is if you go to tools options you can do this elevation exaggeration so if we turn that up to maybe 1.5 and then you can come into the area in question and tilt your screen so that you have this 3D view of it and it can really help to, to point out obvious confining margins like these hill slopes here so it's pretty obvious here you know you can tell pretty easily where the valley bottom is so that has also been a, a useful tool for us in delineating these valley bottoms